That's the last time I ever go out on a damn blind date. Crazy boy, man. Hey, what's good, everybody? Hope you guys are all well. Um, I wanted to share this story real quick. So, anyways, I believe on August 5th, this new movie called uh, Bullet Train's coming out that I had worked on. And, uh, you know, it was funny because when I worked on this movie... It happened to be the anniversary of my brother's passing, the, the two-year anniversary, right? So, you know, like, there's all these, like, there's endless jobs, right, with, with the acting stuff. For people that don't know, like, you know, I've been paid to laugh, like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, just people laughing at a thing. I've been a laugher, this, that. You know, even, um. so on this job, it was to play a dead body, right? Like, I had... You know, got paid before, like on Westworld, for those of you guys that are familiar on Westworld. Um, which I wasn't going to do because I was like, ah, but you know, like with the whole acting thing, like I'm union and everything. So, you know, it's, it's decent. It, it's pretty good money to just lay down and take a nap sometimes, you know, so I was like, I'll do it, whatever. I was getting the thing to not do it. I was being told spiritually, don't do it. And I was like, huh? I was like, well, I thought it was me overcoming like the trauma, right? Like, oh, you know, it's on my brother's anniversary. I'm gonna play a dead body. And, you know, I was like, maybe it's something, something's, maybe it's just me in my head thinking I'm gonna be traumatized by it. So, so I try, I talked myself out of it and just submit it and I got it, right? And, uh, and so they, you know, whatever. It was like, okay, you're going to play a dead body. Then, you know, you, we had to get, like, uh, we go get COVID tested, right? Before every single acting job, you go get COVID tested during, you know, for the last whatever, two years or however it's been. Um, so, you know, but if you don't show up to work, you don't get paid for the, for, the COVID, for the COVID thing. And like I said, since I'm union, you get paid, you know, a decent amount just to go take the COVID test and, uh, but if you don't show up to work, then you don't see that money, right? So the day before we had to go work, the casting director messages, oh, don't forget to take like an extra pair of underwear, this and that. You know, you're going to be drenched. And I was like, oh, hell no. Because it said it was going to be by the beach. And, you know, it, it's February, so it was still winter. It's cold. I was like, nah, it's not worth it now. So I messaged the casting director. I was like, hey, I was like... Why didn't you say we we're going to get wet? I would have never submitted for the job. Well, I think we messaged, maybe she messaged me back once. And then I was like, well, I would have never submitted for the job if I knew we were going to get wet. Um, and then so um, she never responded, right? And I was like, and she had done that before on another movie. like, So it was the second time she had done that where they didn't, they failed to mention something just so you could go work. And then when you're there, it's like something you didn't agree to. And of course, you have a choice. You could be like, screw this, I ain't doing it. And then whatever, it's your, whether you, you know, get thrown off the job or whatever. But anyways, so I was like, all right, I'm just going to show up. And then over there, I'll tell them like, I ain't doing it. Uh, because, you know, like I said, I wouldn't have been paid for my day. I wasted to go take the COVID test. So anyways, I go to work and there's supposed to be 12 of us. Two didn't even show up. Uh, and then the other 10, everybody's like, yeah, man, I didn't agree to it. I was like, did you guys say anything? And everyone's like, no. So I was the only one that actually messaged the casting director like, hey, like I wouldn't have came to work if this was the, the case. So anyways, whatever. Everyone's cool. So I'll ask, screw it. You know, like all these guys, like, you know, the, whatever. it is what it is. I'm here. Whatever. We change into whatever for the scene. And then so... We go, and um, I don't know, I mean, the movie's coming out in a couple of days, so I don't feel like I'm ruining everything, anything. Well, I just won't say it, because, you know, technically, we're not supposed to say this and that, but after, like, I'll show, or I'll show a picture of the scene that, that I'm in. But anyways, it's like, you know, we're in this scene playing, like, a dead body, right? And so, you know, we're laying there. And then, you know, they put on the Hollywood magic. There's all this rain coming down. But it was exaggerated, right? Because we're supposed to be in a place where it's, like, kind of raining a lot. So we're there. I don't know for how long. The sun's, like, 
almost starting to set as we're starting to film so we're doing i think we're probably like an hour into you know just over and over they keep reshooting the scene right over and over you know we're by the beach so next thing you know the wind comes in and everything and so it just f starts freezing i don't know my body starts shaking right and in my head i'm like oh what the hell like now nah, i'm tougher like than this like i could do it you know i've been in north dakota in, in negative 50 degrees with the wind chill so i'm psyching myself out but my body's just like hey screw you <laughs> it's just like i'm shaking like crazy so finally in the middle of everything i just stand up and i'm like who's in charge you know I, i'm just like upset you know and it's pretty unheard of you know what i mean like you know, I'm, I'm just, that's pretty much all I'm doing. You know, it's like, uh, it's basically like background. There's your category. So I'm playing, a, you know, like this dead body and it's that. But after that, I just had it. I mean, it was the anniversary of my brother's passing. So it wasn't like, I was in the best of moods anyway. So it was like the perfect circumstance that I was like, and I knew I was like, man, they warned me not to do it. So I'm just so upset. I'm like, who's in charge? And then I don't know if it's the assistant director or the director. I, I didn't really know who was who comes up to me and I'm like that's it I'm not working no more I'm like I'm shaking I'm this that I'm like forgetting that oh uh and I think I was leaving I feel nauseous and then so they send the medic over you know then they're like uh they stop the whole production you know they send the medic over they bring us hot oh we're gonna bring you hot tea where they bring heaters everything like hot tea heaters towels all this stuff and um the medic, like I, to I told her, like, I'm super thirsty. And she's like, oh, wow. She's like, yeah, you were getting, like, your body was shaking so much, you were burning up all your water. So that's why you're so thirsty. And I was like, oh, wow. So, you know, they have us all there for, like, an hour. They, they let us, like, relax and get warm and take off our wet clothes, all this stuff, right? So it's just we're doing all this stuff. And then, so, you know, they had to come pretty much like, oh, you know, is it okay? Can we do? Because, oh, yeah, I forgot to mention. So I'm in the scene, like, I'm right by, like, the main actors. The two main actors in that scene come up. You know, so there's two of the main actors in the movie. So they're right behind me, like, doing some stuff. And uh, I'll put it to you like this. Even, like, one of them, um, like, I think the mach machete might have been not perfectly good, but they're still chopping up stuff. And it hit me on my head even. It didn't cut me by some miracle. But even that, I like made a sound and then you hear the two main actors like, oh, sh you know, oh, shoot, I think the machete hit him in the head. <laughs> and then like someone asked me, like, hey, are you okay, son? I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. But that thing fell on my damn head and and they're like, oh, wow. So I was even upset about that. So I think maybe that even pushed me like, okay, we're over here freezing. You drop a damn machete on my head, you like idiots, you know, the main actors. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? All this stuff. So I was like, screw it. So that's. You know, when I stood up, I was like, that's it, I'm not working no more, which is kind of unheard of, right? Like, I stopped the whole damn production, like, not being, like, one of the main actors and nothing. It's just, but since I was establishing the shot, they needed me there because they had already been doing all these takes for, like, an hour with me right there, right next to the main actor. So they needed me in the shot. If not, I would have probably been disposable, right? But anyways, so then all that, all that happens and, uh, and, um, what do you call it? So whatever. We're over there for an hour. Then they kind of plead like, oh, can you please? Uh, we won't use the rain no more. So I, I'm guessing they're going to do it with CGI or something. They're like, we're not going to use the rain no more, blah, blah. So, okay, well, we laid down. Oh, yeah, and one guy didn't even come back. So out of the 10 of us, there was one guy that didn't even come back because he was feeling. So everybody was feeling bad. I was just the only one that spoke up. Again, just like with the email. I was the only one that spoke up. So one guy didn't even come back because he was, he was feeling horrible. So... You know, there's even this other older guy that was like, just like, he looked like he was about to die, but, but, oh yeah, yeah. So that's how they got us back. They're like, Hey, can we, can we go back? We're going to give you an extra hundred dollars just to do a couple shots. Like no rain. Okay, cool. Like the other guys were like, yeah, yeah, come on, come on. I'm like, all right, fine. So everyone was going to get out of all, all 10 of us that were there. We're going to get an extra hundred bucks just cause I, you know, it's funny just cause of, of the rain. It's like, they're only going to give you an extra 19 bucks, which was dumb. Right. And then they're like, okay, here's an extra hundred bucks. We're not going to use the rain. no more. okay, fine. Then we're there. And then all of a sudden they're like, okay, we're going to turn on the rain. And I stand up. I'm like, no, I'm not working. And they're like, oh, come on. Then they come and they're like, we'll give you another hundred dollars. Just one shot, one shot with the rain. I'm like, oh my God, just one. I'm like, if you don't just one, then I'm I'm not doing it. And then like, okay, okay, we're gonna get. So everyone got an extra. All ten of us like got an extra hundred dollars 
just for the and they're like, yeah, and after we're going to have warm showers waiting for you guys. We're going to have robes. We're going to have this and that. And I'm like, fine. So we do the shot, just one shot like they promised. And then that was it. And then one of the production guys is like, man, I hope everyone thanks you for those extra 200 bucks you just got, everybody. And I was like, I was like, I was like yeah, whatever. You know, uh, I forgot if they, th I think a couple guys said thank you. But it was like, you know, I guess I bring all that up because, you know, that's all it takes, right? It's, like when you, it's like when people, you know, like we don't think like the people above, you know, this movie with millions of the Brad Pitt's in it, right? So it's that new Brad Pitt movie. So it's this movie with, uh, with uh, oh, and Sandra Bullock, I think. So this new, you know, this production with all these millions of dollars. And here's, you know, just me, right? <laughs> like putting a stop to all this production. And they like, they just had to, they didn't want to. To stop to, uh, oh, like how, you know, I was already in the shot. So it was like, you know, they could have given us a $200 to begin with. That's how easy it wasn't nothing to them. They were going to give us $19 for, for getting wet. And then I got 10 people an extra 200 bucks, which is two grand, right? That they had no problem throwing. They could have, we pro probably could have even got more, right? Just for standing up and being like, no, the power of no, right? Uh, you know, the power of no. But it was funny because even though, I was warned not to do it after it's kind of like the saying, you know, like God will make something good out of something that, that, that was bad. Right. Like I didn't listen. I went, but then I guess they used me to stand up to this, you know, this whole big old production and, and, you know, I mean, kind of stand up for people. And that's how it is. Sometimes you just have to be pushed. So that's the point is like so many things in life. We haven't been pushed to the point because it was just the perfect storm. I did not care about this stupid movie on the anniversary of my brother's passing. Right. I did not care. Nothing like I don't care. Oh, whatever a movie, Brad Pitt, this and that, whoever the famous director was. I didn't care about none of that. It was the second year anniversary of my brother's passing. I'm right there. Like the casting director lied to us. She never told us we were going to get away after, you know, I, I think after I probably didn't end up working. I had done that ambulance movie before that with, with the whole Michael Bay movie. And uh, even that, they didn't tell us certain things. So I was like, oh, this lady's like a liar. You know, she just, she'll hire you. And then after there's always something. I had other friends too that, that, um, that, you know, that had experiences too. Yeah, man, I had to keep, and then that they didn't work with her for a while because, you know, that's kind of, see, when they feel like they have the power, people bully you into doing stuff, right? Or you just, you're like, okay, I need the money. That's how it works. That's why you got to be self-sufficient, right? Like you got to be able to stand to where people, you know, you're willing to walk away. And that's the sad part about life, right? Until you're willing to walk away from mistreatment, then people will see like, oh, damn, like they either see your value or they don't. And then you walk off. But you always got to be willing to walk away if you want to make change in anything, right? So not to get all like political, but why not make a lesson out of um that, right? Like when you have... I guess we just haven't been pushed to the point. When we get pushed to the point, because I always tell people the most important is minimize everything. Everything you could think of on a big scale, if you minimize it, you will see it's not impossible. Everything, if you can make it to just how it relates to your life, then it's not impossible anymore. It's not something so like, oh, but we can't make this change. We can't nothing. It's the same thing. Everything on a small scale is a bigger scale and, and, uh, you know, you could put it in that context and, and you, you'll you see how things can be changed, you know? It starts like that, right? Like, if you could do something like that on a little scale, then it could be done on a big scale. When people are pushed enough and they finally say no, that's when, when, uh, and you know, think about a company, because they'll either do that, well, if we, because I've been there, I've been there. I remember working at a company when we we're trying to bring in the union and they're like, we'll shut the whole th that thing down before we become union. And people didn't vote for the union. And as soon as they saw the union didn't pass, they mistreated the employees so bad. Everyone was like miserable. They're like, oh, and for me, I was like, I told you, I, like, I voted for the union. I was like, why? No, I didn't. I was like, okay, well then why are you crying? Like you didn't want the union. Um, You know, I did my research. Like I know like my my brother had worked for the union all those years. I had never worked for a union, but it was like, you know, so I voted for the union because I asked, I did research. I was like, is it worth it? Some people said no. Some people said yes, but the yes seemed better. 
it made sense to me. So I was like, all right, I voted. And then once the union didn't pass, they mistreated everybody. But they brought that fear like, oh, we'll close the company down before we go union, right? And they probably would have, but, but, you know, you'll never know if you don't take the chance with things, right? So whatever there. I just want to share that story because it, it was funny to me. Um, you know, it was funny to me that, you know, but it was like spiritually they had told me to do it. And there I go, you know, I'm sure they already knew. They were like, this guy's not going to listen, but we'll make a lesson out of it. You know, and like I said, it was interesting that, uh, you know, I guess it was, I felt good after because I was like, man, I stood up to, I stood up for myself. Like it was something important to stand up for yourself. You know, and just me against this huge production with millions and millions of dollars and you could still invoke change, right? You could still say like, no, I don't care. And, you know, it was just because all the other workers were like, yeah, yeah, come on, come on, come on. Once they said like, oh, we'll give you another hundred and then we'll give you another hundred. Like, just like that. Like, like then everyone was like, come on, come on. And I seen this old man that I was more worried for him. I was like, man, I thought, you, like, I was thinking about you too, man. I was like, you look like you're about to die. <laughs> I said, yeah, it's fine, but it's, you know, I think like 60 years old or, or something. And and this guy was like, yeah, but it's fine. It's fine. Extra. Like, you know, for him, that was his price, right? Like the extra 200 bucks was good enough for him. And it was, I mean, it, was, it took like, what, five minutes? Not even that. Extra 100 bucks for like five minutes or something. Not even that, maybe like two minutes. Who knows? Just one boom, cut, and then that was it, right? So whatever. Just an interesting story that I thought I'd share. You know, the movie comes out August 5th. I don't even know how much of that, you know, sometimes you do all this work and it'll be like, you know, it's like a 10 second clip, right? Because they got the money to spare, right? So that's it. Hope you guys are well. Peace. Yeah. Got the song right here I want to sing for you. I hope you get the message. Listen up. Uh. No more, no more, no more. No more, no more, no more. No more, no more, no more. Being frustrated, but I'ma demonstrate to you. Yeah, to you, but there's a will, there's a way. Cause I ain't never thought I'd let it see this day. But well, hey, look, I'ma keep on pushing on, being strong. If not for me, then for the next generation. Cause look at what they're facing, man, it ain't looking pretty. These greedy two pay where we're not to stop there. Cause the truth is, they scared, yeah, they hiding. And ruling in this world from their high castles. Yeah, they high castles, I'ma battle this out and punch them in the mouth With this knowledge dedicated to the masses, so hear me out Cause I do sure hope that you make this world better Cause I guarantee you they ain't gon' do it, stop there It's time to activate your activism and show them you do more They simply post cool quotes on your media page Uh, and you can feel my rage Yeah, you know sometimes you gotta speak up Don't die in silence, the time is now Yeah, so I'm go, go can find someone that thinks just like me and I hope, no I know, to get the baby will succeed cause I've tried, yeah I've tried, not doing the saying anything but I die, every day, just waiting for someone to stop and say hey, no more, no more, no more. Wait forever, forever.